10. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 unscripted Jim Carrey moments that were left in the movie. Well, look who decided to show. For this list, we're looking at times in films when our favorite rubber-faced comedian made us laugh relying only on his uncanny improvisation abilities. What's your favorite Jim Carrey moment? Leave some smokin' comments below. Number 20. Uncovered Sneeze – Ace Ventura When Nature Calls Unsurprisingly, you can expect to get a lot of great improvised Jim Carrey bits from his more unrestrained characters, and there are few of his as unhinged as Ace Ventura. Bumbleway Tuna. Hi there, nice to see you. Bumblebee Tuna? He's introduced to the African Wachati tribe, and his cultural ignorance is evident from the outset. Soon enough, his guide Greenwall explains that the tribe was untouched by disease until they met colonists, at which point Ace does about the worst thing he could do. They have lived in the same state for thousands of years. They did not know about disease until the white man came. <laughs> Reportedly, Carrie came up with the action himself, though the tribesmen he sneezes on probably knew what was going to happen, judging by his perfect reaction. We like to think that he didn't. Number 19. Fall From Above – Fun with Dick and Jane Fun with Dick and Jane is a remake that's gone mostly forgotten among the Carrie community, and probably for good reason. But if there's evidence that Carrie can stay in the moment when a bit goes wrong, it's this one. Yes, Mrs. Williams, this is Officer Red Green of the MVPDL. And uh, we've recovered a stolen vehicle that uh, is registered in your name, and we'd appreciate it if you could come down to the impound lot and... What? My car's been stolen? During the climactic heist sequence of sorts, Dick manages to get an employee to leave the building so he can use her computer to print a vital document. However, another employee walks into her office, and Dick hides by hanging from the ceiling. Upon dropping down, Carrie accidentally missed the desk and fell to the floor. Rather than break character, however, Carrie completed the scene by grabbing the printout, proving his dedication to any project he's in. Number 18. Big Gulps – Dumb and Dumber Sometimes all you need is to be in the right place at the right time for memorable comedy to sprout up. In the first Dumb and Dumber movie, Harry and Lloyd pull off the road to stop by a convenience store, and on the way out, Lloyd greets a couple of guys drinking Big Gulps in the parking lot. Hey guys! Oh, Big Gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. Not only did Jim Carrey improvise the brief one-sided exchange, but the gulpers weren't even paid extras. They just happened to be two bystanders in the area watching the film shoot. Probably sensing the potential for improvisational gold, Director Peter Farrelly decided to put them in a shot before Carey predictably proved him right. Some people just weren't cut out for life on the road. Number 17. Trying to have fun – Kick-Ass 2 While Jim Carrey ultimately came to denounce Kick-Ass 2 over the level of extreme violence displayed, that doesn't mean he didn't put in a memorable performance. As Colonel Stars and Stripes, Carrie's character leads a newfound coalition of superheroes known as Justice Forever. And just before their first mission, he gives them some sound advice. Everybody else spread out, catch the strays. Yeah. Oh, and try to have fun. Otherwise, what's the point? It may seem like a small moment, but the line turned out to be a recurring clip in the marketing campaign, selling Carrie's inclusion in the film. As an added bonus, Carrie improvised another line later in the scene, taunting a criminal while using his dog to interrogate him. Ow, it hurts! <laughs> yeah, there's a dog on your balls. Number 16, Dinner With Me, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Much like Ace Ventura and Lloyd Christmas, we're going to be seeing a lot of the Grinch on this list. Now for those who's inviting me down there on such short notice. Even if I wanted to go, my schedule wouldn't allow it. Seeing as the Grinch spends a good deal of the movie speaking to himself, not to mention his trusty dog Max, it's only sensible that some of the best lines came from Carrie riffing on the spot. When the Grinch tries to come up with excuses for not returning to Whoville, he lists a lot of hilarious schedule items. But arguably the best one, the dinner with me line, Carrie came up with on his own. 5.30? Jazzercise. 
6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. Each of these lines is like a mini joke wrapped in a bigger one, exemplifying how few words Carrie needs to be funny. Number 15, asking sons for a kiss. Me, myself, and Irene. Oh, shit, no way, Dad. Hey, oh, Pops, how you doing, oh. man? The whole premise of Me, Myself, and Irene is a man whose second personality makes him very unpredictable. Say what you will about the inherent humor in that, but Jim Carrey's managed to be unpredictable for his entire career, and we love him for it. One such example is when his character Charlie from this 2000 black comedy sets out on his day and says goodbye to his adoptive sons. Kisses. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> While Kisses Goodbye might seem normal, Carrie reportedly ad-libbed this moment on the spot, making it even funnier. What's more, the three actors, including a young Anthony Anderson, go through with it without breaking character. Now that's four great improvisers for the price of one. Number 14, Milo Scenes, The Mask. Between Eisenhower from Kick-Ass 2, Max from The Grinch, and Milo from The Mask, Jim Carrey definitely knows how to work with dogs. In one scene from The Mask, Carrey's Stanley frantically tries to hide the money he stole with a frisbee. Only Milo has other ideas. Hey, hey, Milo, no. No, no, no. Stop it. I'm coming, okay, I'm coming. I'll be right there. Reportedly, Milo wasn't supposed to initiate a game of tug of war, so Carrie's frustrated reactions were conjured on the spot. But Milo, coincidentally also named Max in real life, clearly knew it would only add to the scene. Later, when Stanley's in jail for the aforementioned crime, he tries to get Milo to scurry up a wall and help him escape. When he initially can't, Carrie also reportedly ad-libbed some of his exasperated reactions. That's it. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Milo, put some effort into it. Number 13, Landing on the Moon, Dumb and Dumber. Sometimes all you need to be an effective comedic performer is to take in your environment and respond in earnest. Clearly, Jim Carrey is already keenly aware of that if this scene is any indication. After Harry and Lloyd finally make it to Aspen and find Mary, Lloyd goes to a bar thinking he has a date with her. When she obviously doesn't show, he grills the bartender for her address and sets off to confront her. Only he spots a curious newspaper article on the way out. No way. <gasps> That's great. We landed on the moon! We don't know if that headline was framed beforehand or by the production crew, but Carrie apparently saw it and came up with the perfect comedic beat to end the scene on. Number 12, Losing Lisp, The Cable Guy. Chip Douglas from The Cable Guy is definitely one of Carrie's most underrated roles. And the fact that he has a lisp is really just the cherry on top of the Sunday in completing a memorable character. Dry land is not a myth! I've seen it! Kevin Costner, Waterworld! During the climactic fight scene against Matthew Broderick Stephen, Chip gets punched at one point and realizes his lisp is gone. You're gonna have to do better than that, Stephen! Steven? Steven! My lisp is gone! Only this wasn't in the script, as Carrie genuinely forgot to incorporate it. Instead of calling cut, he rolled with it, making for one of the best jokes in the movie. Oh. Oh. You stupid son of a bitch! Honestly, it's hard to believe that this wasn't a fully planned moment. But such is the majesty of Jim Carrey's superb comedic wit. Number 11, Tablecloth Trick, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This one occurs almost immediately after the dinner with me line. While we could have incorporated this one into that entry, the moment is too good not to go fully in depth with it. Seven o'clock, wrestle with myself, loathing. I'm booked. Of course, if I bump the loathing to nine, I could still be done in time to lay in bed, stare at the ceiling, and slip slowly into madness. When the Grinch starts to come around to the idea of making an appearance in Whoville, he starts to wonder what he's going to wear, prompting him to experiment with a tablecloth. <laughs> 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 
While the script had everything on the table go flying immediately, Carrie accidentally performed the tablecloth trick perfectly. Making the joke even better, Carrie went back and had the Grinch knock over everything himself. This is absolute comedic gold, and something you could try a hundred times and not get it as right as Carrie does on the fly. Number 10. Dr. Robotnik's Dance – Sonic the Hedgehog Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik was an odd casting choice to say the least, but it resulted in a fun performance that allowed the actor to revisit his over-the-top roots. The comedian was given free reign to ad-lib on set, and by the end of shooting, Carrie wasn't sure how much of the actual script made it into the movie. I'm Major in charge! Is me. Major Ben Charge. Carrie's most uproarious improvisation comes in the form of a dance sequence. While analyzing one of Sonic's quills, Robotnik cuts loose with choreography that only Carrie could come up with on the spot. Evil grows in the dark. It was reportedly Carrie's idea to include the song Where Evil Grows, remembering it from his childhood. See, that's a Canadian band. I came up with that song from my childhood and it actually turned out to be a band from Vancouver. Carrie's assistant Nicole also fed him a line when Agent Stone shows up with lattes. Ah! I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. What do I look like, an imbecile? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! Number 9. On 9. Me, Myself, and Irene Though the actors playing Charlie's sons were mostly able to cover up their surprise in the kissing scene, that wasn't always the case when it came to Carrie and his antics. On multiple occasions, he caught his co-stars off guard. In another instance, Irene and Charlie's other personality, Hank, decide to ditch their vehicle. Ready to shove the car off a cliff, Hank tells Irene to push on the count of nine. Ready? On nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why not the count of ten? It doesn't really matter since Hank counts down in barely a second. Carrie came up with this line, and you can tell from the bewildered look on Renee Zellweger's face that she was not prepared for it. Number 8. The Cellist's Arm – Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Just don't let me catch you with an animal in here, that's all. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye, then. Loser. Carrie was heavily involved in the production of Ace Ventura, contributing rewrites to the script and injecting numerous moments off the top of his head. Infiltrating a party, Ace does everything in his power not to blend in. As if his eccentric wardrobe and personality weren't enough to draw attention to himself already, Ace goes out of his way to pull on a cellist's arm. This causes the musician to hit a wrong note, but Ace just keeps walking without skipping a beat. Oh look, honey, there's the hors d'oeuvres. Carrie threw in this random moment without preparing anyone, least of all the cellist. Even when given the most straightforward direction, Carrie can't resist sprinkling in something extra. I'm gonna execute a button hook pattern super slow mo. <sighs> Number 7. Hello, Clarice. The Cable Guy. Come on, baby. If we had to single out the two most horrifying characters to come out of the 90s, they would undoubtedly be Hannibal Lecter and Jim Carrey's Cable Guy. Okay, maybe we're exaggerating when it comes to the latter, but Chip Douglas does borrow a page from Hannibal the Cannibal in this scene. Dost, dost have thou a mug of ale for me and me mate? He has been pitched in battle for a fortnight and has a king's thirst for the frosty brew thus thou might have for thus. At a medieval times restaurant, seriously, why aren't there more of those? Chip asks Matthew Broderick Stephen for his chicken skin. Draping his face in the skin, Chip imitates Hannibal's gruesome disguise from The Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. It's good to see you again. You can tell that Carrie improvised this moment based on Broderick's reaction. As Carrie covers his face with poultry, Broderick is unable to maintain a straight face, visibly breaking on screen. Number 6. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang – Ace Ventura When Nature Calls Once again, Carrie had the creative freedom to go wild as Ace Ventura. Fulton Greenwall is completely unprepared when Ace decides to take a shortcut. Likewise, actor Ian McNeese wasn't expecting Carrie to suddenly burst out singing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. 
Having forgotten his lines, Kerry ad-libbed with the theme from the Dick Van Dyke musical adventure. Oh, you, pretty chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, we love you. And our pretty chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang loves us too. Hi, hi. Way to make an already stressful situation even more unhinged. We're not sure what's more impressive, Carrie's manic improvisation skills or the fact that McNeese didn't break out laughing. Director Steve Odekirk chose to keep the scene since Carrie and McNeese managed to stay in character throughout. As Carrie hits the song's final note, however, McNeese can be spotted cracking a smile as he covers his ears. <laughs> Number 5. Directing Max – How the Grinch Stole Christmas Despite all the aforementioned Grinch goodness, arguably his most elaborate ad-lib took aim at the film's director, Ron Howard. Before heading off to Whoville, the Grinch attempts to get his dog Max into character as Rudolph. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. He does this by channeling Howard, even donning one of the director's signature baseball caps. What ensues is 100% Carrie poking fun at Howard's directing methods. Howard wasn't offended by Carrie's imitation of him. On the contrary, Howard found it so hysterical he couldn't leave it out of the picture. Brilliant! You reject your own nose because it represents the glitter of commercialism! Why didn't I think of that? Cut, print, check the gate, moving on. Of course, Howard had to cut some of Carrie's more adult-oriented ad-libs throughout the film to keep things PG. Are we the only ones who want to see an R-rated director's cut? Taxi! It's because I'm green, isn't it? Number 4. Meeting Count Olaf – Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events this dark comedy has too many improvised moments to keep track of, but Carrie's introduction as Count Olaf is definitely a highlight. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am your beloved Count Olaf. Although he acts as if the world is his stage, Olaf is ironically a horrible actor. So when Olaf asks Klaus Baudelaire to repeat the line he just said, it seems to be on brand for the character. Your left side is the good one. In reality, Carrie forgot his next line and decided to spin his mistake into comedic gold. Give me the line again, quickly, while well, it's fresh in my mind. Our parents just died? <gasps> oh, yes. A confused Klaus thus says his line again, prompting a more shocked reaction from Olaf. Between the performances and the editing, this unscripted moment plays out seamlessly. Carrie is a method actor, and even when drawing a blank, he can stay true to his role. The idea! Anyway. Number 3. That One's For Free – The Truman Show Believe it or not, it was Carrie's performance as Ace Ventura that convinced director Peter Weir to cast him as Truman Burbank, one of his most dramatic roles. Weir also came to appreciate Carrie's improv talents, which can be seen in the finished film. When Truman talks to himself and the audience in the mirror, Carrie added an extra bit of whimsy to the moment. Is he looking at us? Jesus, do you think he knows? As his character pretends to be an outer space explorer, Carrie took a piece of soap and drew a helmet on the mirror. Apparently, there was another take where Carrie sketched a dress, although the astronaut attire best illustrates Truman's desire to escape from Sea Haven Island. I hereby proclaim this planet. Trumania of the Burbank Galaxy. Hmm. Okay. Gonna go? All right. ready. <laughs> that one's for free. Kind of ironic that Carrie would later play a man on the moon. I hope you don't take everything I did in there seriously. What I was saying, at least, it's just part of the show. Number two. Sorry, wrong pocket. The mask. Spoken! When Stanley Ipkiss first transforms into the cartoony mask, he has some fun at the expense of a local street gang by setting up a balloon animal booth. Step right up here! Don't be shy! Nobody likes a best balloon ahead! Move it! After making one gangster a giraffe, the mask reaches into his pocket and accidentally pulls out a soggy used balloon. Now. Sorry, wrong pocket. Oh, wait, we just realized that was not a balloon. There goes our childhood innocence. The moment is only made more hilarious when you consider that Carrie apparently came up with this bit. Talk about being a master of improv and prop comedy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the most annoying sound in the world, Dumb and Dumber. Hey, I guess they're right. Senior citizens, although slow and dangerous behind the wheel, can still serve a purpose. I'll be right back. Don't you go dying on me! It shouldn't come as a surprise that Carrie was entirely responsible for some of the funniest lines in this cult comedy classic. Though the aforementioned entries are genius in their own right, Carrie's most notable contribution comes during an already obnoxious car ride. Stuck between Harry and Lloyd, hired goon Mental is on the verge of cracking. So naturally, Lloyd tries to ease tensions by making the most annoying sound in the world. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? This was all Carrie's doing, and it's easy to spot the look of uncertainty on Jeff Daniels' face leading up to it. Daniels also joins in making the sound, but not before cracking up. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.